you now have learned the melody to the song. You've learned different ways that you can jazz it up. So now let's just hear that melody before we move forward to the solo section and see how does it sound with the music. And, and then you can also um, try to play along with me as you feel that you're ready. That's how the chorus sounds and the and the 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 bridge, whatever we want to call it at the moment. And that's what's gonna lead us into our solo section. So now that we're at our solo section, let's review some of the things that we did in course three to build us up to, to this point. One of the first things we learned how to do was to take our major scale and um use it to create ideas. We also used learned that we could take it and use it in its different degrees and we could come up with um, things to do. So I'm going to give you an example of a line that's, that, that's going to be predominantly made from the scale. Okay. Now what did I just do in it to, to, it to essentially? Let me break that down for you. I walked down from my fifth note so in the key of C, my fifth note is G. So my, uh, my fifth note is G in the key of C, and I'm walking down basically with, with a different ry rhythm and melody, or every note in the key of C all the way down to C. So from G down to C. For all you on tenor saxophone and soprano saxophone, your fifth note in the key of F is, is C. So we were doing the same thing walking down from C to F. So... Key of F. Something like that. All right. So now let's let's put it to the test with the with the with the solo part. And two, three, and and it's okay not to do it the same way every time. So you see, I used the fifth degree. I didn't start on C. I, I picked the note that I want to use. I started on the fifth degree of the scale, and I walked it down to the first degree of the scale. And remember, landing on your first note, your third note, and I think we did talk about the fifth, that those were some good places to resolve ideas. And it looks like also it may be some good places to start ideas. So that was simply an idea like that. So I want you to um, try it with me this time. One, two, three, let's go. I'm gonna do it that same way again, I'm gonna hold it and one more time, let's go. Okay, now, another thing that we did, so we accomplished two things in that. We accomplished playing something from a major scale standpoint, and we accomplished playing something from a modal or a degree standpoint because we didn't start on the root position. And we didn't start on the, 
You see what I'm saying? We descended. We descended. Now, what I want to do now is I want to move to an example because I want to give you some of these quick examples from the last because we had a whole course on those. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on these. But I want to give you quick examples of how we're building. So now we want to respond to ourselves. So that was the call. Da, 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 da. Now, I want to respond to myself. I'm going to choose to use the major pentatonic scale. So our major pentatonic scale in the key of C is Remember, it's C, D, E, G, A, C. For uh, um, soprano and alto and tenor players, you have F, G, A, C, D, F. Now, I want to start from the fifth degree of that scale. I want to I want to do that. So on the in the key of C, I'm playing G A C C D E. That's gonna be my response. So if I'm starting from the fifth degree in C, for you soprano and tenor players, you're gonna start on your C. So that's gonna be C D F F G A C. Let's see how I answer myself in real time with this solo in this solo. One, two, the first line call. All right, now my answer is gonna be. <laughs> All right, now put it together. So as you can see, I got two, two different ideas by changing the timing in which I play. So see, another one of your tools on the belt is your timing. I put, it, I, I, I put space in the first time, and the second time, I put them more together. And playing them again I almost sound like I was continuing the conversation. So see, it's not hard to play from your soul, and it's not hard to solo. You just have to make small statements and it has to make sense in relation to a conversation, a musical conversation, a call and an answer. And if you have your tools and you memorize your scales and you're comfortable with them, what you're hearing in your head, what you feel in your heart, or what you're singing in your mind, you can begin to make all that come together. And that's, that's what's happening right here. So let's demonstrate that again. Bass. I'm going to do the same thing again, less bass. Now, one more thing. Remember, we can deviate. Don't forget the resolving. I'm going to take the same idea, which is basically you know, my major pentatonic scale in the key in, in the key that we in, but I'm just starting on the fifth degree of it, walking it up. Walking it up without going to the octave. That's basically what's happening with that. I'm gonna resolve that lick. And I'm gonna I'm gonna land on my one now. And I want you to see how you can take that because major pentatonic scales lend themselves over and over again to be repeated and deviate in small ways to make new ideas. So resolving on the one now can make it a whole nother idea. Let me show you. Here we go. One, two, three, and. You see how that worked? It, and it left me open to continue the conversation. Da -da -dun -da 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 -uh. And it's like, oh, what I want to do after that was. <laughs> okay. So now, now I want to move on from major. I want to move on from major pentatonic. 
because like I said, these were covered in the last course. So another thing we covered in the last course was grace notes. And we talked about a little bit in the, we talked a little bit about it in the melody, but now I want to make up a line off of some of the grace notes that you've learned. So the way we're going to do this now is I'm going to do the grace notes that we said you can find in the major key between the third and the fourth note. That right there. So for alto, alto players, that's E to F, back to E. And so for you who are on soprano and tenor, one, two, three, that's you moving from your A to B flat. So what we're going to do, we're going to go. So what I'm doing is I'm going. E, F, E. I'm going D, E flat, D, and I'm resolving on my C. Now, that D, E flat, D, we can find in any key because D is your second note in the key of C. So your second note in the key for you soprano and tenor players in the key of F is G. So you're going to basically grace the note from G to A flat and resolve on your F. So us on alto, we're going to play D. We're going to resolve. We're going to start on D, re do the grace note to, to E flat, come back to D, and resolve on C. So that's altos, tenors, and soprano. Now, our last um, grace note thing that we learned was result going from the six to the five. So my six six note in the key of C is A. So if I, if I trill between A to B flat, or grace note between A to B flat to A, I can resolve on G. Like we learned that in the last course, right? So in, for soprano and tenor players, that for you would be you're actually doing the grace note between D to E flat to D to C like we did for altos. So your whole line is that's A to B flat A, G to A flat to G, and then you got D, E flat, D, C. Now, if you notice, I'm using the biz key B flat because it's easier, but you could still do this B flat and you'll be fine. But this is the one I'm using where I'm covering the biz key, that little tiny key. Um, this little tiny one right here and B. I'm using them together. That's how I'm doing it. Now, alto players. E, F, E. D, E flat, D, C, and then A, A, B flat, A, G. So that's what we got going on there. So now I'm going to put that into play with the solo part in the solo section. Then I'm going to show you how all it works, how it works with everything that we've been over so far. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, one. And you don't have to play at the same tempo. So you can change the rhythm of these things and make new lines. So like slow. Let's do that one together again. One, two, three, and. Now I'm going to do a little speed. You don't have to follow me, but listen. Okay. So now, um, I think that covers most of the stuff that we did in the last, last course. 
except except us doing um the minor pentatonic scale so for those who are on soprano and tenors and tenor your minor pentatonic scale for f is f a flat b flat c e flat f And to make the we combined it with the blue scale because if you add B, that's another super gospel, super bluesy way to add that flavor to even something like this that's not super bluesy. Now for soprano alto saxophone players, we have F, I mean C, E flat, F, G, B flat. C. Okay. And if we want to make that the blue scale, we can add one extra note, which will be F sharp. And again, I show all these things in course three. So if you haven't been to course three, you might want to get it. Okay. So this is the lick I'm going to do. So what am I doing? Alto players, I'm going G, F, E flat, and I'm walking it back up to G. So G, F, E flat, F, G, and I'm going to E flat down to C. Okay, so now how would I do that in the key of F? for soprano and tenor saxophone players. So I start on my G, which is my fifth note. So your fifth note is C. So we got C, B flat, A flat, B flat, C. And you come back down to A flat and you land it on your F. Now, if I go bluesy, so you see it works. It works. You can you can add that blues note into it. You can throw it in that way as well. But I don't want to spend a lot of time telling you what you can do. I just want to show you that these things work. So now, let me put all these things together into a solo. Idea number one with the major scale. Major pentatonic. All right. Grace notes. Blue scale, minor pentatonic. Grace note. That was straight major pentatonic. So you see, if you call and answer yourself, you're going to, this is going to make a lot of sense. So one thing you can do without music is maybe even practice each thing individually and call and answer yourself. And maybe even go through it the, the, to the, the modes with it. Just think of, compl think of easy ways to try flipping things around that you, that, you, um, that you already know and see what happens. Experimentation, even when you play stuff wrong, sometimes makes great ideas. So now let's learn something new that we can use in the solo section in our next video.